that I speak about is not the economic part. It's the repair of the mind. Yes. Because you don't have any swing over the economic part right now. But you have to start today. So when we say exodus of your people, we separate from them. The most beautiful thing you can do for your mind is to extrapolate Europeans, Asians of either part from your from your psychological matter. That's the greatest repair. That's the first freedom. Then you got to renounce everything that is here that you're a part of. That you get short term gains from white supremacy. So as you see me here standing, whether you come to my shop, whether you see me talking somewhere, there was a time when I had no thing. I had shops in West Norwood and I had burglaries and I decided that I'd get a job for six months and then I didn't do anything. I invested in me. I decided to become a gardener to grow a seed. So when you're a gardener, don't look for consumers. Look for fellow gardeners to garden with. Look for men and women of a similar ilk because they're the only ones who are going to help you. Nothing that you get from their system is real. The tax that we paid since we were invited to build in the Windrush went to paying our enslavers. And that was all paid back in 2015. And the minute that was paid back, we were surplus the requirement. So when Asians are doing their thing, don't worry about them. Worry about you. Take all of their brand names out of your mind. And remember our brand names. Forget about uh, boycotting anybody's business. Know your businesses. Know your businesses. And in knowing your businesses, as a consumer, you become that gardener in growing the seed. Seeds are precious. Babies start as seeds. The embryo grows, it germinates, and then we deliver them. These young men here, young men who see themselves a million miles from me. So you think that um, post-Cold Wars is new? No time. When I was in North Peckham, and we went to Aldeas, we carried weapons, and we fought. And every single one of those Aldeas, there will be a CS gas attack. And if you're in a house party, there was a CS gas attack, and there were stabbings, and there were beatings. And I'm talking about 26 years ago. This isn't new, but we can't complain about the same things. The thing that saved me was reading Malcolm X at 17 years old, because it doesn't matter how far left I went, I would always come back to a center. He said two things, where the watch, know the time. Respect yourself as a man. Dress as a man and act like a man. No time in my life did I ever forget that. That I am a man. You think any European can stand up next to me, look like me, think like me, know his spirit like me. But when I was 17 years old, I was a million miles from where I am. At 18 years old, I moved back to my old area where all my friends were petty criminals. And there was no roadmap to show me where I needed to go. So I made it up from scratch. So it's incumbent on us as men who know to come together as gardeners. There's a universal system that works for young men. It's called rites of passage. WYLA is rites of passage. Origin is rites of passage. Manhood Academy is rites of passage. Wherever it's delivered. And it's not whether you are from a 2.5 child family whether your parents are married, it should be universal for us. For this reason, it teaches you to be culturally competent, it gives you high identity self-esteem, and if you don't have those things, you are nothing. Not in this country, in this world as a man. We're obligated to observe our culture, promote our culture, and uphold it. Because without it, you are absolutely nothing. Us walking around calling each other black, we didn't create that. Yes. So you're an African, wherever you're from in the diaspora, and I'm not talking about your Caribbean bulk stock, because again, um, that was inherited. This is not where we're from. We're Africans first. And I'm humbled to be invited by my brother, Leo Mohammed, as an African, because I'm not in the nation. 
I'm a Pan-Africanist. But no one thing. The nation is my family. And I don't say that lightly. And I know the fruit. I see them everywhere I go. And the fruit is strong. And for the young men who are weak out there, seek strength. Stand next to strength as an African. Don't ever separate yourself. So the reparations we're looking for starts here. Yes. I'm free. I'm stronger than you. I can now articulate you. I can now theorize you. I can now work you. And what I personally know, I cannot suffer you. And when I all suffer you, I'm going to last. You don't have that. Europeans don't have that. You know what Europeans have in their chest? Suicide. And the closer you come to Europeans, the more you align yourself with them, the more mentally weak you become, the closer you come to jumping from the bridge. So the greatest reparation you can have is to rescue your mind and join us as Africans and serve your community because you're obligated. Thank you for me. Well, the first thing that I want to say to the nation, we don't have class. We don't have class, man, because I'm bring up in this pretty hotel, yeah. But you know they treat black people, no matter what's good with the bathroom, look at. 